Thank you so very much. Um, for Stad Gamal, just ask me, so what kind of wine did, <laughs> did you like key? <laughs> right? <laughs> well, I've, I've been actually asked that question. So let me, uh, let me explain. Um, in mid 2000s, I was invited um, to Cambridge to give a talk on the poetry of Nizami Ganjavi, a 12th century Persian poet. After the talk, at the dinner, I was asked a number of questions about works of Nizami Ganjavi, including um, the, the, the significance of, of the concept of wine in his, in his work. Uh, and I said that um, the wine in uh, the works of Nizami Ganjavi has more than one meaning. Um, sometimes it's metaphor, sometimes it's the real thing. However, just to compare, I added um, that in Rudaki's poetry, wine has one meaning, it's the real thing. Um, and uh, I mused further and said that um, I can indeed confirm that Rudaki preferred uh, Pinot Noir over Merlot. Uh, well, some laughed and, and um, some didn't. Uh, <laughs> but a few years later, uh, I received an email from Oxford this time, inviting me to give a talk on the concept of wine in Rudaki's poetry. Well, I, first I thought it was a prank. You know? <laughs> so I kept thinking and, uh, you know, uh, before I answered, and, I, and, and one, during one of my runs, and this, this photo is actually pertinent, this is where I had the epiphany, you know, <laughs> what I can say about that and what material I can use. Um, so um, I went uh, to Oxford a, um, a number of years later, I gave the talk, Last year, I worked further on the article. It became much longer, and I uh, pre uh, submitted for publication in an edited volume, and it's going to be published in uh, spring. Um, and um, today, I'm going to um, present a, a shorter version of that. However, it's uh, with musical accompaniment. <laughs> yeah, this is when I have to pick up my son usually. So, however, uh, so in other words, you know, you all have the stories behind your, your projects, in, uh, but mine, in this, at least in this case, was merely on, based on a joke uh, that I made after that, that dinner. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but when, you t when we talk about the concept of wine in Persian poetry, we usually start with the works of uh, Rudaki, because he was the first one, but you always remember Manu Chehri, uh, he, because he, he also was a, a, a poet of, of uh, uh, significance, um, uh, and no matter how we approach the theme of wine uh, in classical Persian, we come across the name of Manu Chehri because uh, he was a uh, 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 because um, he, he wrote profusely on, on the topic. In, in, um, he, uh, he died in 1040. Uh, and he was a poet of, of uh, the court of, of Sultan Mas'ud of the Ghaznavi dynasty. He's best, best known as the poet of lavender, um, but he truly excelled in the depiction of vineyard wine and winemaking, implementing many original images and metaphors even today in Iran, um, <coughs> uh, people uh, nostalgically recite this poem. Dar majlis ahrar se chiz astu fuzun be one har se sharab astu rabab astu kebab ast. They recite that. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have any kebab or wine in the scot. <laughs> but many scholars, including Bashiri, believe that uh, Manu Chehri was continuing the tradition of Rudaki, whose uh, poem entitled uh, Madar May or Mother of Wine, uh, Rasida, set the scene for a series of works on the theme. 
Manucheri has apparently read Rudaki's poem and perhaps many of his other poems that did not um, survive to reach us. In fact, Julius Scott Maysami, William Hannaway, and Jerome Clinton have pointed out the similarity of these two men's themes and mode of expression and their longevity. Maysami offers an analysis of the wine poetry of Abu Nawas who um, personifies wine and uses it as um, replacement of um, the mamdu. She writes, wine thus becomes an object of adoration as well as praise. And the poet's journey to the um, tavern, a pilgrimage to her um, holy shrine. The fact that wine is also described in concrete terms color like rubies, scent like musk, uh, bubbles like pearls, and so on, does not detract uh, focus of desire, praise, um, and worship. The uh, attributes may also be seen as a contributing factors to the continuity of the theme in Persian poetry. <clears throat> So um, uh, perhaps along the, 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 the lines of, of Julius, uh, Julius Scott Maysami's contention, our own Yassi Nurani also states that Abu Nawas uh, and the early Islamic wine poetry is more specific. Um, well, his, his view is actually more specific because he argues that poets supported in their works as a specific view of power and society whereby whereby uh, those with moral uh, self-integration were justified in, in being uh, the, um, the leaders uh, in engaging the court's entertainment. I'm just paraphrasing, I'm not quoting directly. In any rate, it is also um, a fact then that fine wine poetry began with Rudaki. Um, a poet in, the, in Bukhara and at the court of Nasir ibn Ahmad the Salmanids, who, who ruled uh, from 1819 to nine, nine, uh, 999 CE uh, of, of the northeastern Persia during the first half of the 10th century. He was the first major poet to write in New Persian and he often wrote about wine in panegyric forms. Through um, his writing, he played an instrumental role in what is known as, uh, uh, as uh, Persian cultural renaissance, um, almost three centuries after the Arab uh, conquest of, uh, uh, of, of Persia. Perhaps all this explains why Rudaki is considered the father of the Persian poetry. <coughs> But <clears throat> who and what had influenced Abu Abdullah Ja'far ibn Muhammad Rudaki in his portrayal of wine? From where did he draw his inspiration? This paper maintains that even though Rudaki, like many other classical Persian poets, uses the word wine in its many, many forms and all associated vocabulary, in much of his poetry, he surpasses others in descriptions of intoxication and celebration when he represents the process of winemaking. Um, and this highly uh, allegorical poem is uh, entitled Mother May or Mother of Wine is just a great example of that. The poem is unique in terms of uh, narrative quality, meanings, metaphors, and prosody. Um, the poem written in Lassida form is also, um, it, uh, it depicts uh, general assumptions about, uh, is despite general assumptions about this old form, meaning Lassida, very structured, organized, unified, and consistent in presenting its meanings. That is, while it meets the conditions of good Lassida, 
i.e. rhymes properly, uses archaic terms, names, locations, and people, and ends with the praise of the patron, etc. It also transcends the well-defined boundaries of the genre. Moreover, it seems to have been written to be performed before a live audience and thus reflects the discourse of the Salmonids, the first uh, native dynasty after the Muslim Arab conquest, who saw themselves to be the continuation of the pre-Islamic Sasanians. It does so through synchronic and dichronic portrayals and references. Moreover, the uniqueness of Rudaki's poem might be explained by his geographical and temporal context under the Salmonids, who in many ways differed from the Ghaznavids and other early native rulers. After all, and based on the knowledge we have from his own poetry and from history books, as an affiliate of the court of Nasr ibn Ahmad of the Salmonids, Rudaki were very much, uh, uh, Rudaki very much functioned uh, like a Sasanian uh, minister, uh, as a poet musician, a role that gradually disappeared in the following periods. In all likelihood, Rudaki's concept of wine is also rooted in the pre-Islamic cultural nuances which were brought to the fore by what is known to be the Sasanids Renaissance. To be sure, the concept of wine changed a generation or so after Rudaki in the works of such great authors as Sanoi, who seems to have been inspired by the issues of his own time. The Tajiks uh, of, during the Soviet Union, actually, I uh, recently, just a, a couple of weeks ago, searching the, the topic in Persian, I came across a movie that the, uh, uh, the, um, the Tajiks made uh, in late 1950s. And it seems that they have this, the same um, understanding of the role of poetry and, and Rudaki himself and the court. Yeah. So, um, I don't think I have time to show this movie. <laughs> uh, what happens is that um, the, uh, the, the Rudaki is invited to the court of Nasr ibn uh, 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 Salman, and uh, the first thing the king tells him that um, drink wine, Rudaki. <laughs> exactly like that. And he drinks wine, and then he challenges to uh, Rudaki to write a qasideh uh, uh, right then at that moment and there. Uh, Rudaki rejects the papers and the pencil, and then he just starts improvisation. Uh, and that is the poem. Uh, I was so delighted <laughs> to know that it's actually the mother of May, Rasideh, uh, that he's doing right there. Of course, that's not true. <laughs> that's not how he did it. But it confirms the understanding of the, uh, the Soviet scholars and the Tajiks at the time that the, about the role that Rudaki, Rudaki played at, at, at the court. Um, anyway, uh, and that's not the only scene. I mean, in almost every other scene, Rudaki is drinking. Um, so, um, I'm not suggesting that he was a drunk, but he, he drank a lot. <laughs> so, um, such an approach might help uh, us understand, that is the approach, you know, putting the, 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 the poem, poetry or reading the poem in the context of this Salmonid uh, Renaissance or, or uh, Persian cultural uh, uh, re re renewal. Um, understand the nuances of what has been conceptualized as the, uh, the, the, the Salmonid's um, cultural change. It is true that the cultural, linguistic, and historical uh, connections between the Salmonids and the Sasanians are not accidental. However, 
The Salmonid context requires further deliberation, as it might have played a more important role than the external elements in the cultural changes of their time. That is, a renaissance cannot be achieved by mere support of Persian literature by the state, and a state cannot thrive merely by its distance from another center of power, being in the caliphs. It takes many other social and cultural progress and improvements to reestablish a nation and, a, and an identity to launch a renaissance. Generally, the metaphors and similes used to describe wine, vineyard, and the responsible grapes are num uh, numerous in the Persian language. The palm of the hand, the bangs of the beloved, a young girl's attributes may come to describe the vine's leaves and the stems of the vine, on, uh, or, uh, or the whole plant. On the other hand, hand, grapes, wine have been used as metaphors and similes to describe the beloved's physical appearance or physical features such as eyes, scent, and allurements. Furthermore, many words have come to describe elements of the process of wine productions as well. However, Rudakir surpasses all the other descriptions when he presents the process of winemaking in this poem. A contextual, historical, and discursive analysis of Mother of Wine reveals that the poem depicts one of the Nasser Ibn Ahmad Salmani's courtly gathering, even though there is no direct mention of the Amir himself. The story behind the composition also might shed light. The history of Sistan book, which was written in early Ghaznavid's period, um, uh, some years later, uh, after Rudaki, it states that Amir Bu Jafar insulted an imp uh, and um, impudent Amir, uh, whose name was Amir Makan, who had been disobedient towards the court. For that, Nasser ibn Ahmad is pleased with Amir Bu Jafar. And Rudaki, being affiliated with the court, writes a poem praising Amir Bu Jafar for his laudable behavior and grace. According to some sources, Makan also pays Rudaki not to lampoon him in the poem. Nafisi also says that one day Amir uh, was drinking and missed Abu, uh, missed Abu Jafar. He sent a number of um, uh, expensive gifts along with Rudaki's poem to him to Sistan as a token of friendship. The structure of, uh, of uh, the poem, its message and its musical tune, whichever way it might have been uh, recited, all likely serve the purpose of the entertainment of an audience, as this movie also um, contends. Yet, in dealing with wine, Rudaki's work seems to have um, certain qualities that have not been fully um, replicated in the works of his uh, imitators or those who were inspired by him, even Manucheri. To illustrate these qualities, I have divided the poem, which I have rendered um, into entirely in, into English at the end of the paper. I have divided it into three sections. In the first segment, Rudaki talks about the fermentation process of wine, where the grape juice is separated from the grapes and joined by other ingredients, creating a chemical reaction that results in the production of wine. That is quite unique. In today's local winemaking practices, which continues in some Iranian households even after the 1970 revolution, which banned uh, winemaking, the sugar and the yeast uh, added to the grapes convert the glucose and fructose into ethanol, a technique partially used to produce beer. You know, the anecdote today is that the, um, the Islamic Republic um, closed a number of wineries, and, uh, and uh, beer breweries that existed before the revolution under the king, Muhammad Reza Shah. So when they closed those few 
places and then there are millions of them now in, in the household, you know, doing by people, you know. Uh, so it is, uh, it is practice. So, um, <clears throat> for the first stage of the fermentation, Rudaki seems to suggest uh, separating the grapes juice, uh, which he refers to as bache, the child, from the vine, uh, uh, mother or mother, to, uh, to start the process. مادر می را بکرد باید قربان بچه او را گرفت و کرد به زندان تا نخورد شیر هفت مه به تمامی از سر اردی بهش تا بونه آبان You have the translation, right? <laughs> However, the suggested seven months um, uh, as much um, uh, a much longer period than uh, needed in other uh, places might have to do with the specific climates of what is now Tajikistan. The average temperature in that region in modern times, according to Google, is uh, 14 degrees uh, Celsius. <laughs> Uh, as for the second uh, phase of uh, fermentation, in which the wine is usually um, siphon, uh, siphon into a vacuum sealed container, Rudaki seems to be in line with recorded techniques. He vividly illustrates the stage in which the must begins to bubble with hours after the process has begun. He clearly refers to the process of extracting the um, sediments, lees, and dregs. Mard haras kafkak hosh posh begirad, pak begiradash. Ta beshavat tiregi shu gardad rakhshan. Akhar karam girad o nashkhat tiz darash konad ostwar mard negahban. Chun benishinat tamam o safi gardad gune yaqut sorg girad o marjan. Nevertheless, despite all these descriptions, the quality and uh, specification of the wine are not very clear. In line with proper wine evaluation techniques, Rudaki points out that to the successful wine processes, color and aroma. Chand azu sorg chun aghiq yamani, chand azu lal chun negine balakhshan, varash be bui goman bari ki gul sorg bui be dudad o mushkan baro baban. He then uh, suggests keeping it for an additional period after this stage to ensure an especially good wine, marvelous like shining sun. هم به خمندر همی گذارد چونین تا به گه نوبهار و نیمه نیسان آن گه اگر نیم شب درش بکشایی چشمه خوشید را ببینی تابان Throughout this uh, section the poet uh, demonstrates both knowledge and humor This knowledge was likely derived from um, still extant but um, waning discourse about wine and then I say humor uh, I'm talking about humor in 9th century Tajikistan, okay, so it's... <laughs> uh, where in the movie they laugh at every other line, you know, the audience, you know, they apparently they find it more <laughs> humorous there, okay. <laughs> so, so the knowledge was likely derived from still extant but waning discourse about wine. Only a few poets after him succeeded in praising wine to such a positive and literal extent. Rudaki's praise of wine was, of course, um, um, uh, anomalous, not only in the uh, religious context of his time, but also in terms of what wine symbolized in the early literary discourses. In fact, in later poetry, wine even turned into a metaphor for something unearthly, an element of mystical discourse. Dick Davis writes, a subdivision of this mystical problem is the set of ideas metaphorically expressed in Persian poetry by wine, drunkenness, and the opposition of um, the rand, approximately uh, libertine, and uh, the zahir, um, uh, ascetic, and so forth. Of what little uh, remains from the pre-Islamic era about the culture of winemaking, Rudaki and other Persian wine poetry stands distinct 
from the tradition of ancient Greeks when it was believed that the gift of um, Dionysus could send the thoughts of men to um, uh, topmost height. Uh, and this is uh, very much in line with, with uh, what, what Plato has written about, uh, about wine. Uh, <clears throat> Rudaki, however, expresses many aspects of, of winemaking and drinking in the language of epigram. Even in the following segments, where he talks about the rituals having to do with serving wine and about how wine can con contribute to a social change, he seems to be lighthearted. بامه چونین که سال خورده با چند جامعه بکرد فراز پنجه خلقان مجلس باید بساخت ملکانه از گل و آزی و سمین و خیلی و الوان نعمت فردوس گسترده زهر سو ساخت کاری که کس نسازد چونان جامعه زرین و فرش های نواهین شهره ریاهین و تخت های فراوان بربت ایسی و لون های فوادی چنگ مدک نیز نای چابک جانان The segment lays the foundation for a panegyric and the praise of the patron. Finally, in the last segment, in addition to the praise of the rulers, he also praises his own metier, asking indirectly for compensation, the usual business of a poet. Here, Rudaki's style and writing is in a fluid um, uh, style of writing in a fluid and a straightforward manner becomes quite apparent. In many of the verses of the poem, metaphors and many other figures of speech stand in to describe and discuss wine. It will be another line of inquiry to provide the social and cultural context in which later poetry, especially those belonging to the mystic poet poetry, such poets such as Sanoi and Attar, began to do um, the opposite, use wine as a metaphor for person or society. So the poem performance aspects. Um, <clears throat> Reading the final sections of the poem, it becomes clear that beyond the theme of wine, winemaking and wine's uh, effect, the poem contains a meaning of, of broader cultural and political significance. True, the wine produced for Rudaki's, uh, uh, for Rudaki's reception, uh, uh, reception is a sparkling and ravishing. And that is, that is the kind of one he liked. Um, it has been produced with um, care and caution. However, it is the creation of the ambience at the time of the composition, consumption of the wine, that constitute the major constructs of the poem. Okay? That is something that has not been uh, noted. The, the, the party is filled with jubil uh, jubilance, prosperity, and songs of success. It is there that the poet, artist, musician frees his imagination in conquering the world, perhaps in reestablishing the world of Persian uh, empires. In fact, there is a literary trace of the pre-Islamic music uh, 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 of Barbud, Barbud in Rudaki's works as well. To be sure, in 12th century, Nizami Aruzi, quoting uh, <coughs> uh, Mahladi Gorgani, points out the connection between Rudaki and Barbour. <laughs> Rudaki mentions many of the areas that were once part of the Persian Empire to impress his readers with not uh, so much the power of influence, but rather the power of imagination. He mentions Barakhshan, Tanje, Ray, Oman, and Sistan. And two years ago, I was in the Tanje, and I was in the Tanje, and I was in the Tanje, and I was in the Tanje. 
in mentioning these, he uh, scares away the worries to the far corners and brings the happiness from the central area of, of Persia. And he drinks to the health of Ahmad ibn Muhammad, who is, by the way, the greatest freeman and the pride of Iran at the time. Shadi Abu Jafar ibn Ahmad ibn Muhammad on Mahazadgan of Mahfar Iran. And he refers to the natural landmarks such as Mount, uh, Mount Sinai, uh, Siam, uh, Judi, and Ararat. Again, while imagining a re uh, uh, revived great nation, a, sublim a sublimic geographical journey indeed. Talat Tawban, the Tarz Talat Khorshid, Ne'mat Pog, and the Tarz Judeo Sahlan. In all this, Rudaki is not thinking in terms of the area covered under the rule of the Samanids. He is reconstructing synchronically and grandiously. He allegedly versified Khalil Demne, and that too supports the no this notion about Rudaki's historical consciousness. Rudaki's discourse also has some <coughs> diachronic um, aspects when he names people. He mentions uh, Sasan, Rostam, Dastan, Espandiar, all from the, uh, the Shahnameh, the Book of Kings. Um, Socrates, Plato, Jesus, Moses, Jafari, Hanafi, Sofian, Logman, Ar Amran, and Amrelais. These names represent an amalgamation of historical, philosophical, and religious characters that have, in one way or another, played a role at one time or another in the process of uh, Persian Empire and afterward. His diachronic approach includes himself, as he writes, my poem rivals Jafari's, Tawai's, and Hassan's, and I have the gift like uh, Sari's and Sahban. He also graciously invokes the names of Bu Omar and Minister Adnan as the person who have encouraged him to write. Varnamara Bu Omar Delawar Kardi, Von Gahdas Turi Gozide Adnan, Zahre Kojo Bugdami Bemad Hamiri, Kaspeu Alfari Giti Yazdan. These historical and geographical, as well as a number of cosmic images and features, complete the second and the third sections of his poem. In a sense, the poem re-represents the Salmonid's universe in its myriad cultural, political, and literary aspects. This is how they pictured their time and place as well. Mother of Wine also reflects the discourse of the Salmonids, who saw themselves as the continuation of, as they, con as they saw themselves as the continuation of the pre-Islamic Sasanians. After all, Sasan Khuda, the founder of the Salmonid dynasty, believed himself to be a relative of the Sasanian uh, Bahram Chubin. <clears throat> Uh, <clears throat> those who apply the uh, European concept of Renaissance to Salmonids in all likelihood also imply or have to imply that there was a rebirth of interest in ancient Persia. With or without references to, to the Renaissance, the Sassanids were indeed interested in the culture of uh, uh, Sassanians. Rudaki's poem reflect some of the complexity of complexities of this interest or what is conceptualized as the Sassanid Renaissance, even though it is written in an allegorical Dasida form format with only tacit references to pre-Islamic past. It reveals that the Sassanids' uh, visions of the past and their views of themselves were, uh, uh, were as as a powerful force in launching a cultural re rebirth which they hoped would lead to a revival of the greater nation. And a movement indeed began 
and expanded during the 9th and the 10th uh, centuries. Moreover, I would like to believe that the Salmonid's renaissance or rebirth in question was at least a creative moment in the history of, the, uh, of Persian, uh, Persia and, a create, and creativity. And there are many, uh, many evidence to support that, that creative, uh, creative moment. And then uh, creativity then um, came to be a core concept in the changes that occurred in the uh, European Renaissance as well. The Sassanid Renaissance lasted for nearly two centuries, 1819 to 1999. The, fru the fruits of the new era were first reaped um, when uh, Nasr uh, received the license to govern all uh, Transoxania in uh, 875 uh, CE. Out of its other major um, accomplishments was the establishment of the Persian language as a literary uh, medium. This was for the first time for Persian to be allowed in this way since um, uh, 697, when Umayyad um, governor uh, Hajjaj ibn Yusuf ordered the use of Arabic notation and prohibited the use of Pahlavi characters. When Persian developed further as a written language two centuries later, Iranian legends were versified under the Salmanis uh, uh, patronage in the Book of Kings. Many versions of different types of Book of Kings before Ferdowsi versifies his. In fact, Rudaki's uh, poesy was all preludes to the, certain, to the creation of Iran's national epic Ferdowsi's Book of Kings which was completed after the eclipse of the Sassanids around the turn of the 10th century. To be sure, the fact that under the Salmanids, Bukhara had become a thriving cultural center provided the context in which Rudaki was able to crystallize the language and imagery of Persian lyrical poetry, paving the way for Ferdowsi's gigantic accomplishment. Persian literature developed amid the use of other languages and in context of some sort of multiculturalism and tolerance for the other. This aspect too is reflected in the poem. Contrary to many Shahnames that were already in circulation during Rudaki's time, he does not put too much emphasis on Persian roots as a major component as a major component of identity. This is starts when an open attitude with, uh, with an open attitude towards philosophy and religious. He writes, "Ankebedu ben gari behikmat gui inak sora to hamafla tuni yunan var tu fagihi yusu yishar garai shafei inakat buhani fau safian." In many verses of the poem, all races, ethnic groups, and religious comes together at the time of, at the time of celebration, reminiscences of the Achaemenids' cultural policy. The king enjoyed good relations with distant rulers. He was found in, uh, in uh, particular of the Fatimids in Egypt, uh, who along with other rulers in the other non-Persian territories are also mentioned and celebrated while drinking wine. And when Rudaki speaks about his patrons, patrons and com uh, compensation, he shows that the intellectuals were not alienated from the ruling elite during the Salmanis dynasties. The following lines, which are the beginning of the section on the issue of rewards also indicate the Sassanids were generous and supporting of the poet. La jaram az jodu az sakhawat oost, nekh gerefte madih o samati arzan, shaer zi u rabat faqir o toydas, ba zar besyar baz gardat o hamdan. Mard sakhon ra az u nawaqtan o bar, mard adab ra az u vazifa o divan. To support this point, one might also consider the works of Rudaki's contemporaries who were impressive in number, although their works are not voluminous. These include Shahid Balkhi, Daghiri, Kasai, Marbazi, Manjanik, Tarmazi, Tayyip Khosravani, and most importantly, the first well-known female poet, Rabe Ghazdari. 
The theme of love, mu music, happiness, nature, eulogy, and bravery are also common in their works. Some literary activists in Iran either ignore Rudaki's cultural presentation or read his poetry from a pure nationalistic or religious view. As mentioned for some great scholars such as Nafisi, Rudaki's dedication to the Persian language is the most important of his achievements, as, as if he wrote in Persian merely for the sake of saving or reviving the Persian language. In his unique and monumental book on Rudaki, Nafis is very, uh, is very concerned with the purity of, the, of, of Persian culture and sees Rudaki as a protector of this pure, that purity. That might have been one of the Rudaki's purposes, but in his poem, he seems very open to other traditions as well. However, and to be fair, sometimes in the works of the late 19th century and 20th century intellectuals, Persian is equal to Iranian. That is, they do not mean to exclude minorities as some of them, in fact, belong to the ethnic minorities in that country. More recently, um, Gilani, who uh, opens his um, informative book about Rudaki's contemporaries by writing, poetry is mixed in Iranian race, um, argues that the Salmanid's use of Persian uh, was the uh, purpose of unifying the land. Uh, this assumes that Rudaki could have written poetry in other languages, yet did not. Rudaki has also been the subject of religious readings the same way many other classical poets uh, such as Nizami or Hafez um, have been in the last few decades. In her book, um, uh, Asimon, uh, in her book entitled uh, Heaven and Earth, uh, Theology of Persian Poetry from Rudaki to Attar, uh, Asif writes, to show the influence of, of um, uh, Islamic theology on the Persian poetry of the Salmanids, Ghaznavids, and Seljuks period, the author not only wants to prove that there are manifestations of religiosity and mystical beliefs in the poetry of these periods, but also contends that Rudaki takes the side of the rulers in her work. Clearly, this contention is uh, project, uh, a projection of the majority of the current official discourse. She refers to only a few religious manifestations in the, in the, uh, uh, in the works of Rudaki to come to a major conclusion about poetry religiosity. A context, um, uh, however, most Rudaki's poems defy too much religions or mystical interpretations anyway. A contextual reading of Mother of Wine is therefore telling of the poet's worldview and the Salmanist social political discourse. It can also provide a more contemporary lesson. This lesson is about identity, cultural change, and progress. It is a lesson that was ignored by the nationalist movements of the early 19th century Iran, the post-Soviet era in Tajikistan, and even now by the ongoing Iranian struggle for modernity. That's it.